Well, welcome to Tim Time Projects, where we're going to take another visit with this guy here. It's the RTL SDR, and that's a software defined radio. So, with this, this here doohickey, you can plug it into the USB port on your computer. And I actually have a little adapter here, you can see, because uh, I didn't want that sticking out of the front of my computer or the side of it on a laptop. <coughs> This is the version 3. Let's see if it says it on here. I think it says it on this side. That'll be upside down to you and me, but right there. This is the V3. I believe it's kind of outdated, but it still works pretty good for what I use it for. Uh, you'll notice on the other end here, I have an adapter. So I can take it down to a, uh, a coax cable like for a CB or ham radio. That's a uh, SO239 is the end, and if it's a PL259 connector like you see on the on the radio uh, antennas. Now you can get these adapters to fit just about any type of ending, so don't worry about that. And of course you get them from Amazon, where else? Uh, and, and that's going to be kind of a necessity, and I'll show you why. I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of antennas, and we'll see what we come up with. After Tilden, one hour, two minutes, coordinated universal time. All right, so if you'll notice, we're here at 20 megahertz, and that tone is usually at 5. 15, 5, 10, 15, and 20. I think it might be a 2.5 also. If you live in Canada or North America, closer to Canada, there's one at, I think it's 335 or something. 3.35 megahertz, which might be easier for you to tune. That's always a good thing to check. But before you do any of that, you got to make sure that, let's see, we're still looking. You stop your trace. You come to the little gear here right next to the trace. Click that and that will open this window right here. And you want to make sure that where it says sampling mode that you're in Q branch. If you choose one of the others like quadrature sampling which usually works pretty good for the uh, higher bands. Just leave that. Watch what we get. Nothing. Okay so you always have to stop it though. Oops. You always have to stop it to do this. Put it direct sampling Q branch. Like I can move out of your way again. And there it is. I'll turn this back up. Alright. There is a 20. Fifteen, you can kind of hear it. Ten, hardly at all. I can hear something in there. Oops. There you go. All right. When they give the time, the little time announcement. The man's voice is Colorado, and I believe it's Colorado, and the woman's voice is Hawaii. So you may hear both a man and a woman recording in there, and they're offset enough that uh, if conditions are fine, you'll be able to hear them both, but just give you an idea. All right, but the main thing we want to look at is what am I using for an antenna? So let's go back to the strongest signal which we had, which was what, a 20? No, I don't think it was a 20, was it? Oh, yeah. At the door, one hour, five minutes. Coordinated universal time. Okay, so I'm using an 80 meter dipole. And for any of you radio nuts, you already know what that is. Basically, it's two pieces of wire that are cut for a total of a half a wavelength. 
and uh, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. This was actually done with a bunch of old spare pieces of wire, wire knotted together and thrown up in the trees about 10 to 15 feet off the ground. Uh, but anyhow, so that's that's what I'm using right now. now I'm going to switch it over, and I'm not going to. No, no sense in showing you anything with that because you can't see it anyhow. You're going to see my my coaxial cable. So I have another coaxial cable here. Again, this is a Antron 99. It's a CB antenna. So let's see. Let me turn this back up. Yeah, it works pretty good. So that's the Antro 99. Let's get on and check some of the other bands. There's 10. Yeah, it's a little quieter. Oh, I don't want to do that. Ah. Five can't hear anything at all. And we'll look at 15. Oh, 15 sounds pretty good. Okay. <clears throat> So my point being there is that just about anything that's outside that works as an antenna can work pretty good for you. So let's see, we have some other things to try. So here is, here's similar to the antenna that uh, if you bought the antenna kit with these you'll get. And at best it would look something like this. This is not it, but this is actually a much better antenna. So let's try that. Well. You'll see that I'm going to show you when I disconnect the antenna. You get nothing, so I always tell people you've got to have something on there. That's with no antenna. You get nothing. So here goes the uh, the antenna that comes with the kit. All right. I'm going to try and show you how it. So this works slightly better than no antenna. So if you were trying to do something with the antenna that came with the kit, don't waste your time. So the last thing I'm going to try, if I can get this on screen, there we go. The last thing I'm going to try is just a bunch of wire. We're getting a bunch of noise. Ten. Okay. Can't take much more of that noise. So that is just using a bunch of wire throughout the house, basically hooking to some pipes and stuff in the house. So let's try something else. Alright, it's 10 megahertz, you can almost hear it. Turn that up. Let's go back to 20. We'll try 15 and then 20. 15 just got a bunch of noise. Same with 20. There's 10. Let me see if I can find the Canada one. Here it is. Okay. So at least we're getting something. It's some type of a digital 
information. I don't know what they send. I don't know what all they send. I think they do it both English and French. So, all right. Now we take the big mystery out of the high dollar thing that I came up with. We turn this on. So you asked him, what did you come up with? What's this mystery antenna that you've come up with? Alright, and we'll show you here. As unorthodox as that is, the red wire that goes there, it attaches to a regular outlet box for the, the mains. There's steel here and if it's if it's wired to code, which I didn't put these in so I don't know if they are, but if it's wired to code that should, the steel box should communicate with the the ground wire on the plug which would, should communicate basically all the way out through all the cold water pipes in the house to the outside where it goes into a ground lug. Now the green wire I needed, I needed some more pipe, but I needed something that really wasn't attached to the cold water pipes. I mean, I'm sure it is at some point. So where does it go? Where does it go? It attaches to the red wire. We're going to run out of... Right there, that's the gas line. So I'm using the gas line as the ground wire. And the... Uh, the... Uh, basically all the grounding within the house for the for the uh, the center conductor for lack of better terms but you can experiment with it and find things that might work better for you because an antenna is not just a trivial piece of wire and as you could see with with what I had look listen how good that's working now <laughs> anyhow I get to my point here Antenna is the name of the game. Make sure you have your settings right and you're ready to go. But you need something for an antenna. And, and the thing they give you here, uh, that's my end on it. But the thing they give you here that comes in the kit that's not even this robust, that's not going to get it. Sick of wire up in a tree, look up how to build a dipole. They, they usually work the best. Uh, or even a long wire. You don't even, a long wire works really good. Just throw it up in a tree, attach it to your attic, your gutters, or even the gutters in your house make a good uh, good antenna. So I hope that helps people a lot and I hope that people can finally start to hear what they're looking for and uh, remember too that HF is very temperamental. Uh, there's times of the day when you won't hear anything on HF and then also having to do with sunspots uh, whenever we have these, these uh, uh, coronal mass ejections or basically like a sunstorm it kills everything on HF. You won't hear anything. So don't write HF off. You might have listened at the wrong time. Good antenna. Make sure you're set up right. Good antenna. And try try the uh, looking for the um, the antenna or for, yeah the try looking for the uh, coordinated universal time in both uh, United States and Canada. Uh, for other countries, I don't know what you use, but uh, you know it, it's it's in the HF band, so I'm sure you can receive them. At, at some point. A couple other things I'll throw in there is uh, if you have your squelch clicked make sure you don't have your squelch turn up so loud or so high that you're not hearing anything. You want to keep your squelch especially for HF. You want to keep your squelch I would recommend turning it off. Uh, but you know that And depending on what you're, depending on what kind of system you're using too, look here at your RF gain. You'll want to keep that down at a minimum. If you have it turned up, uh, turned up too loud, it brings the whole noise floor up. So you, you kind of make sure you check that. Put it where you like it, but uh, if you get too high, and I'll show you. Usually, when you choose this quadrature sampling. It's blanked out. 
So if you go back to, uh, or QBrand sampling rather, if you go to quadrature sampling, it's there. And just watch when I turn it on, watch what it does to your, to your noise floor. Well, not, not so much on this band, but if I bring it up to see your noise floor. Yeah, so you don't want that. So turn off your squelch and leave your, uh, your RF gain way down here, if, if that's even a choice. But again, like I said, I just prefer to go right with Q branch. that works much better. There's a lot of different things you can check in here. Another thing to look at is your filters here. Uh, I usually go with the uh, right here, the Brat, what's that, the Blackman Harris 4. That's just, I don't really notice much difference for what I'm listening to. And bandwidth, you can go with the defaults, but you can actually look at what what they're set to. I'm not going to give any numbers because uh, no one's going to remember them anyhow. But uh, I don't even remember them half the time. But you'll see, like for sidebands, it'll be a lot thinner. See how it's 2400, and then for AM, it's it's six. It should be six thousand, but I probably and AM will be your FM will be even wider. Don't worry about the numbers so much. But if you do change them, you can always look that up on the internet and find out what what's a good what's a good band. Or if you go wider, you're just going to bring in more noise. But if you go too narrow signal's going to sound like crap. So, uh, there's a lot of, lot of other thi things on here that you can play with, but these are the main things to get you going. So hey, thanks for watching and I hope this helps you out.